When you think of venomous wildlife, you'd normally picture it being way out in the wilderness. Oh, that's a rattler. That's a big one. But what if I told you that in the city of Miami, there are rumors of a highly venomous monster centipede lurking beneath our feet? Miami. You probably know America's second richest city for its vibrant nightlife, but I'm not here for that kind of party. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I've always been fascinated by the strangest creatures on the planet. That's why it's become my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world. And let me tell you, Miami is hiding one very special secret. In the tropical hammocks along the coast, there are whispers of a giant centipede that occasionally frightens joggers and turns up in people's bathrooms. I'm joined today by my good friend Emilio Pasmino, a fellow wildlife educator and a South Florida resident who knows this area a lot better than I do. If we're going to track down one of these elusive and potentially dangerous arthropods, I'm gonna need all the help I can get. Heard Emilio yelling, he's uh, He's got something. Yo! Look! Hang on, let me get You're that. gone! You're Look. gone five minutes! What do you got? This is the wandering Emilio power. <laughs> Disappear for a bit and come back with a cool animal. Right here we have a male African red-headed agama. Not the prettiest guy. We're gonna see some that have really bright colors, but it's still. Look at how awesome this lizard is. It reminds me a lot of like the bearded dragons, right? Like, yeah. But the coloration is just striking. Like the males you see that have like these dark legs. These like bright blue iridescent scales on the back. And then on this one, like I said, it's not very visible, but they have a bright orange tail with a black tip. Another one of the many invasive lizards that you can see here in South Florida. Emilio is a special breed of biologist. I'm convinced there's not an animal on this planet that he couldn't catch, given the opportunity. This habitat is treacherous, and with sweltering heat all around us, he is definitely our best shot at getting this centipede before the afternoon sun bakes us alive. We're gonna lay our bags down over here. Um, there's cover all in this spot. We're gonna flip these things I've been told by a good friend of mine they're wicked fast, so if I don't get a beautiful catch on camera, don't judge me. I'm gonna set a, I'm gonna set a wide angle lens and film this whole spot and hopefully we uh, get one. All right. One for you. Thank you, sir. One for me. It's a, of course, it's a yogurt container because People in the comments love that I use creative things to catch stuff. This actually worked really well. Emilio wandered a bit out of view, and it wasn't long before he found something. Yes, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> now, as far as centipede goes, he's very chill today. Like, we were told that possibly this animal was going to be very erratic, hard to handle, and unpredictable. But so far, he hasn't shown me anything that I haven't seen in other scalapendra species. He's actually not too bad. No. I have really bad luck with Skullpendra. They always bite me, and that's a big enough centipede. Yeah, I definitely don't want to take a bite from him, but it doesn't seem like it'll happen right now. We thought we had it. We set it down under one of our containers briefly to try and calm it down for a thumbnail shot, but it disappeared, burrowed straight down into the substrate. We went from having our quarry to empty-handed, seconds. And with hundreds of rocks and logs to flip along this trail, and the sun rising higher in the sky, we realized that Florida was not going to let us have this creature so easily. Whew, it is hot in here. This hammock habitat is steamy. It's a lot of work because it's hard to tell, aside from the logs, it's hard to tell what cover is flippable. So we're seeing a lot of weird little invertebrates and lizards, but so far... So far, the centipedes are proving it'll be a bit tough. Um, but my buddy Jack told me they would be tough. So we, uh, we came prepared. We figured we'd be here the whole day. So it's just hotter than I expected it to be. We continued scouting the terrain, scanning every nook and cranny. This area is full of life, but we're after the apex predator of the hammock's subterranean world. They could be very few and very far between. I did, however, find something else a distant cousin of our target centipede. Oh, millipede, how about that? Look at this little guy. Oh, he's cool looking. That is probably the coolest looking millipede I have ever seen. Now you'll notice I said millipede. We're looking for a centipede and you might be asking Spencer, are they related? They absolutely are. Now, they don't look too much alike except for the fact that they both have way too many legs, but 
they fill completely different ecological niches. The centipede is a predator, squeezing into tight cracks, looking for all kinds of little small animals. But this one is a scavenger, eating all kinds of little decaying material, plants, stuff like that on the forest floor. And as a result, you can see, they're really slow moving, very chill, honestly, not even scary little animals. They are sort of dumpy, hard bodied, and you'd be hard pressed to get one of these to bite you. I don't even know if they're capable of biting. Some are poisonous and they'll spray you with some nasty spray, but these guys, this guy doesn't seem to be doing that. Not what we're looking for, but we're gonna keep on flipping these logs for a centipede. Like centipedes, this millipede is a myriapod. And since they lack waxy cuticles on their exoskeletons like insects have, they need to stay in the moist, cool cover of the rocks and logs to survive, especially in this blistering environment. You may be wondering why we're even bothering to be out here searching for such a creepy looking creature in such challenging conditions. These centipedes are not just fearsome monsters, but they're extremely special creatures. Believe it or not, there are some animals that creep me out too, and coming face to face with two other species of North American giant centipedes has helped me to improve as a biologist, but after an unfortunate bite incident with a giant centipede back in Texas, I need to get my hands on a new species to get my nerves back, and I couldn't think of a better species to do it with. This is a much rarer one, found only in the southernmost tip of Florida, and a true gem of the natural world. It's a long trip for me to get to South Florida from my home in North Carolina, so this is pretty much the only opportunity I have to see one of these titans in the wild, and the hotter it gets, the more likely these centipedes burrow further underground. Wouldn't you have it though? It's not just the centipedes that are taking shelter from the heat under these logs. Oh, there it is. It's done right where oh, my booty is. Neat looking. Hey, buddy. Nice. They feel so strange. They're so. Oh, it's like gripping. Yeah. I don't want to actually hurt them. No, buddy, you're okay. Grab with the other hand, too. Oh, look at you, buddy. He oh, squeaks. Yeah. Wow. Have a look at this little guy. It's a tiny little gecko. As we saw with the agama and all the anoles we're seeing around here, this is yet another invasive species of lizard. Now we only have one native species of gecko here in Florida and it's pretty hard to find. So if you're in South Florida and you see a gecko, it's very, very likely not gonna be the native species. It's another invasive. Yep. These guys, invasive or not, are absolutely beautiful and kind of adorable. Look at that beautiful, incredible patterning on the back. Even though they're not native, in this environment, they would have incredible camouflage. And they feel so strange. I mean, you've you've caught geckos before, so you're, oh, yeah, you're used to it. <laughs> North Carolina, we have no native geckos, and there's only like reports of like some introduced species. So I don't see geckos very often. And it's such a silky, bizarre texture, unlike any other reptile I've worked with. Yeah, because they actually have very soft skin. It's not scaly like most other lizards. And also, Spencer, you notice this when you first grabbed it their toe pads are very sticky because Extremely. they use it to grip onto objects. So it felt almost like he was stuck to the log when you try to pull him off. Yep, of. such an unusual thing. And you can feel how delicate they are. That tail is extremely fragile and you don't want to grab him by the tail. He'll throw it right off and then he'll be food for a predator, just like the centipedes. Believe it or not, the centipedes we're after today would be eating this lizard. They are the apex predators underneath the cover out here and they are gnarly and hopefully we'll get our hands on one. The air was getting thicker around us as the heat and humidity rose. Emilio and I had split up again, clambering our way through the tricky terrain of the hardwood hammock. This habitat is like nothing I've ever seen before and it's not all that surprising that a tropical centipede would be lurking here. And let me tell you, this search was frustrating. We saw very few creatures under our flips, and even the logs that looked the best for a really menacing creature to be lurking underneath revealed just unoccupied soil. Was that first centipede the only glimpse of Scolopendra alternans that we were going to see? It wasn't looking good. It does. Yeah. We just gotta get a good spot with lots of cover. We're not finding a good spot with lots of cover like that one was. Oh, big, big fucking one, holy Nice. Uh, here, give me a stick. Yeah, yeah, chase him out. Yeah, yeah, okay. he's not digging yet, he's not digging yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got him. Wait, 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 wait. He's digging. Ah, you got us this time? Okay, yeah, scoop. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. One, two, no. Ah, wait, watch out. Oh, he almost got me, but he didn't get me. Okay, one, two, three. Yep, he's in. Okay. He's in. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'm 
trying to get him in there. Okay, no in C2 shots this time. In the clear. In the clear container. In the clear, okay, sorry. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, he, uh, he's angry. Okay, let's go back to our bags. Yes. Now this is something really special. What I have right here is the Caribbean Giant Centipede. And it's a gnarly looking thing. Look at that. Absolutely amazing team catch with Emilio behind the camera right there. This is something I've been looking for for a long time. Ever since I heard about it years ago, I've wanted to come down to South Florida to try my hand at catching this magnificent creature. Now, what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can get it to hang out on a stick for me. Now, I've been warned this doesn't work very well with this species. With large centipedes, sometimes it works. With this one, it might not. I'm gonna try one stick. This thing moves. This is the apex predator of the underworld here in these hammock habitats. You can see it's very soft bodied and that's intentional. They need to be able to squeeze in between the tight spaces of logs, rocks, and we saw those really weird porous boulders. It looks like dual wielding these sticks is keeping him fairly calm. Now you'll see him probing his antennae all over these sticks because these guys are incredibly sensitive. Those antennae can pick up chemical trails of all kinds of other animals out here. Reptiles, invertebrates, amphibians, they'll take down anything, even prey larger than they are. The Scolopendra, while not as venomous as like venomous snakes or some of our more seriously venomous spiders, they have a pretty gnarly venom. Like if you look in the front of his face there, he has those modified legs that are called maxillipeds or toxicognaths. And they are basically this animal's version fangs. While they are legs, they're actually hollow, and they're used to inject that deadly venom into their prey. You might be wondering, well, if it's such an apex predator, why isn't it just out in the trails? Why doesn't it own its space and dominate this environment? That's because centipedes have kind of one little nerf that's keeping them in check. And that's because these guys, unlike other arthropods, they lack a waxy cuticle on their exoskeleton. So where we saw lots of stuff like this underneath logs and rocks, it is very hot out here and very humid, which means these animals will lose water extremely fast and they will dry out and die. So while they are the apex predators of the underworld, they don't last long on the surface. So we're gonna keep this interaction as short as we can so we can get this creature back into the environment where it can survive and thrive and live out its secret life unknown to most of the people here in Miami. Absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love seeing giant centipedes in the wild. They scare the crap out of me, but I think they are awesome. So this little guy right here, a real treat here in Florida. My third giant centipede and a breathtaking creature. As I released, I had to take a chance to free handle the centipede just a little and its placid nature did not disappoint. A truly beautiful creature. And even though it might be frightening to some, its subterranean lifestyle makes it incredibly easy to coexist with, even in an urban environment such as Miami. So amazing to see such diversity thriving here. And I couldn't have gotten to see it without Emilio's help. I'm working with him a bit longer here in South Florida. And there are some other rare creatures we've got our eyes on. And this wasn't the first giant centipede I've found living in a weird place either. Turns out there's a rare giant centipede living in Louisiana too. I went on an adventure to track that one down. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.